All right, so I'm back. Went to the store to get some drugs. By drugs, I mean energy drinks. Um, you know, if you drink enough of them within a short amount of time, it can kill you. So let's uh, let's call it what it is. I got a dependency issue. But uh, you ever wonder if all the awesome things in civilization would not exist if uh, if it were not for uh, drugs? Uh, think about it. <clears throat> I mean, have we really properly evolved to be uh, programming, you know, sitting at a computer all day and just, like, hashing out formulas? Or, uh, or is that something we've kind of adapted ourselves to do, but we're not really designed for it, and therefore we need drugs to do it to maximum capacity? You know, that's, I don't know, that's my hypothesis, is that we're not quite designed to be programmers, so we need drugs. And maybe that's also why we're not quite designed to be programmers, and that's why your autistic types uh, tend to be better programmers, because being a programmer is an anomaly. I don't know. That's what I think. Um, okay, so this for these formulas here, the long-handed and the short-handed I've just put here, um, and we're going to take the short-handed version and put it into our code because like I said earlier I don't like I don't like going over my column limit right this uh, cyan line over here I use a column limit of uh, 64 columns which is less than your old school 80 and definitely less than uh, the uh, new standard of 120, right? So people get these large horizontally scrolling monitors and they use like 120 for the column limit, if they have a column limit at all. Um, I think that code is a very linear thing. And because of that opinion, I, I think it's the natural format of code, I think, is a vertical monitor. Um, and I think the only reason code is written for horizontal monitors is just because that's the path of least resistance, right? Because your monitor is naturally going to be oriented in a horizontal fashion, especially if you're doing something on a laptop. Um, but I think that, um, I think sometimes when you're just going with the path of last resistance, uh, when you're going just the path of least resistance, sometimes I feel like you're doing something wrong. Like, you're n if you're not opinionated enough to have have something that's kind of going against the grain, um, then something's wrong. It'd be like a, it's like a, with an artist, right? Like, they have a very specific opinion about what kind of pencil they're going to use, and if you're not an artist, you any old pencil will do for you, right? Um, so that's what I'm saying about um, if you're just going to go with a passive least resistance, you're just whatever pencil you pick up, you're going to use it. Um, then maybe you need to program more or draw some more art or whatever you do. Maybe you need to be a little bit more skilled in your trade. Um, but I, I, that's kind of an asshole-ish opinion, isn't it? Um, uh, but you know, that's my opinion. I think, you know, a lot of people who spend a lot of time doing something, they start to get very strong opinions just because they do it all the time. Um, antithetical to that, I will say, um, I do have an art degree, and I, uh, I actually don't have, uh, well, I hate pencils, because I hate the sound they make, but, um, pens, um, I don't care what kind of pen I use to draw with. I actually like to draw with the crappiest pen possible, just so that, um, I can make something decent with the tools that are around, so that's kind of antithetical to what I just said. Um, so, you can decide whether I'm full of shit or not, and whether or not I'm a complete asshole. Okay, so we've put this uh, shorthanded formula in here, and we need to um, also uh, declare um, var f equals math.floor. And um, if we were doing some type of C code, we could do something like uh, define, you know, f. And then we could define that as math.floor, 
right? Uh, because that's all we're trying to do is we're trying to make something shorthand here. Um, and we're changing the functionality of the code just to make it look nicer, which um, that's kind of hacky, right? This is kind of hacky here. Um, I'm not really... I would not recommend changing the functionality of code just so that you can change how it looks on the screen. I think that's probably um, not the smartest thing to do, but I'm going to do it because I obsessively line things up and I never, I like to never break my column limit. So I'm doing something stupid. You don't have to follow in my footsteps. Okay, so now that we've kind of pasted that here, we have to make sure that we have all the same variables, and I don't think we've declared the locals, but the viewport widths and viewport heights, have we declared those? Nope, we don't have those. Um, so we need to uh, cut and paste some stuff from our our work that we've been doing over here, which we got a lot of a lot of uh, work. Um, let's. Uh, Let's just take these width and height calculations and we'll put them into uh, the main code. And then that just has to be up here at the top somewhere. Um, so, all right. And then same thing with the uh, width and height of the uh, source. So instead of D, we're gonna use S. And um, also, this needs to be width and height. Width and height, width and height. All right, and then just really quickly, we're just going to click each one of these and make sure that two colors, two areas of color, never light up in this general area. That's just a quick, mindless way for me to make sure that I uh, didn't miss anything, right? So, like over here, like if, uh, right, if I forgot to change that width to a height, you know, my little double-clicking habit will tell me, oh, there's a problem, right? Okay, so that looks good. And we might want to make a comment and also get rid of some of the spacing here. And we can say, um, so VP0 is destination and width and height. And this is the source, right? So source. And that's the width and the height. Okay, so let's go over to where that's being used. Okay, so we have these variables. But now we need the locals, right? So the uh, the coordinates of the destination view part. In terms of local coordinates, local to the destination view part. We're gonna take the global coordinates of the destination viewport and we need to turn them into these local coordinates and we already have the formula for that we're just cutting and pasting from the work we did previously um, so I'm just gonna scroll down here and find the uh, LDX and LDY okay so LT LDX and LDY are right here and um, why are they not in Oh, they're probably in uh, in here, right? LDX, LDY, yes, they're there. Okay, so I'm going to just uh, take the, the LDX, LDY, and go back into the main code we're working on. And so DX, DY. So all these calculations um, don't need to be made unless we're actually inside of uh, inside of the viewport, right? Because we're currently we're going over the entire canvas. And then um, if we are inside the viewport, so this area here, uh, then we can start doing calculations. Um, so let's take the local coordinate calculation and we'll put it right here. So that's the DX and the DY. Uh, minus the top left, um, and I've ran out of space again, so I'm going to say 
Um, local local chord like that. Yeah, sure, why not? Um, LDX, and that's LDY. And I think I made a mistake here. So did I? No, OK. So local chord, destination X, and destination Y. LDX, LDY, DX minus the, um, the left bound, DY minus the top bound. Now that's been pasted in there, we have it in our formula, and we should be able to see the code still working, except we've just kind of like refactored some things. So let's take a look at our screen and let's do a refresh. And that looks correct to me. Click handler is still working. Arrow keys are still working, right? I, I didn't expect anything to be broken. Uh, and also, one of the things we want to check is we're going to zoom in with the mouse wheel and zoom in on this canvas and see if uh, those corners still look about right. And I think so. Mm, I don't know. That actually looks like there's a... That actually looks off by one. Um, did I... So these guys right here, did I make sure to add one when I did those? Yeah, I did. Yeah, huh, weird. Um, so I changed around the formulas. Well, let's, uh, let's really quick, let's, um, you know, the plus ones are in there in our calculations right here. So if I uh, make these into zeros, the incorrect formulas, uh, what are we going to get? Are we going to... Okay, so it's more like more like that. Yeah, so that's definitely two pixels. Yeah, that's definitely... Okay, yeah. I'm just making sure because um, it seems like um, everything... Okay, so now, okay, that's definitely one pixel, and that's one pixel. So without seeing the contrast uh, and looking at that top corner, I was just a little bit confused as to whether that was correct or not. But okay, seeing the difference between the incorrect formula and the correct formula, um, that's still good. So my refactoring did not change anything um, that I am aware of. And I've given some thought to how we're going to make a colored border around uh, each tile. And the way we're going to do that is um, is actually going to be easier just to do the one pixel border around it, which is what I want anyways, um, because all we have to do is detect if the uh, the local coordinate is the local is the local y or the local x zero. Or is the local y or local x at the maximum possible value it can be for the local coordinate range, right? That's all we have to do to figure out whether or not we should put down a solid line of color. Um, so let's take a look at our code. So we know where we're actually putting down the color. It's right here. And let's see, convert x, y to index. Okay, so this is just converting um, the SY and SX, so the source the source position. So that's fine. That's all fine there. This is like an inlined pixel setting right there. And what we're concerned with is this RGB. Where is the RGB being defined? Oh, well, it's right here. It's um, This is the pixel. Well, hold on. Oh no, this is uh, this is the sampling, right? We're sampling the color of the pixel slash tile that's on the source. So that's all correct, but it's then it's, I guess it's here where we might want to do a different RGB with like a black lining if we are at that border. Um, so we got our local X's, yeah, LDX, LDY. Um, so. 
uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write it as, I'm going to make up some variable names as I'm writing it so it doesn't interrupt the flow of the whole process here. So if uh, LDX is um, technically if it's equal to zero, but sometimes I'll do less than or equal to zero, even though, you know, that should never, that should never happen. So, um, let's see, how do we write this so that if uh, the coordinate is invalid, we get a little bonus error checking. So if LDX, um, so if zero is equal to LDX, so we don't accidentally do any assignment, or LDX, or or if um, LDX max um, equals LDX. Um, okay, well, what do I have to worry? Out of these two, since these are both uh, variables, um, what would cause the most trouble if it accidentally got assigned? I'm going to say what would cause the most trouble is assigning to LDX max because we're going to calculate that outside. I think we're going to we might calculate that outside of the loop. Um, yeah, because um, that's going to be determined by the tile size. Okay, so because we're probably going to calculate LDX max outside of the loop, um, if we accidentally corrupt this within a with an assignment like this. Like everything's gonna be in trouble. Um, versus if we do this, um, right, and we accidentally overwrite it uh, once in a loop, it doesn't matter because this gets recalculated. Well, it still matters, but then this gets recalculated the next loop, and then um, we haven't totally corrupted the state for scanning through all of the pixels. Um, but you could argue that maybe this is the wrong order because now the the problem is going to be when you look at it's going to be if this produces any artifacts the artifacts that this produces are going to be much more subtle than the artifacts that this produces right um, so maybe we want to do it this way just because if we do accidentally screw it up it's going to be much more obvious. And uh, if, if we're going to have code that is erroneous, do we want it to be um, noticeable or do we want it to be subtle, right? Uh, I guess we want it to be as noticeable as possible, um, right? So I'll keep the assignment in this order, right? So if we accidentally corrupt this value, it's going to be corrupted for the entire... Uh, rest of looping over the canvas, and it'll be very noticeable. Okay, so if we are on one of these borders, uh, then um, we will uh, do like the checkered uh, pattern. And then uh, else uh, if um, LDX is greater than zero, and LDX is less than LDX max. And in that case, uh, just uh, no, ch no edits or do nothing. And then else uh, throw LDX is out of bounds. And uh, for this, so if we are on the uh, the left right kind of border, we could do RGB. Um, let's actually do something like RGB. Um, okay, well, we got to remember that arrays are passed by reference. So if we just assign the RGB array to another array called RGB black, we're gonna be in some uh, we're gonna be in some pain. Uh, and so to make sure we don't accidentally screw anything up like that, we can go all the way up here. I see we already have RGB black and RGB. And what we can do is have something called var RGB ref. And we'll set that to null. And then RGB ref is like a pointer that will point to either RGB or RGB black. And that way we don't accidentally... Um, 
get like weird pass by reference errors because you know I was about to uh, assign RGB equals you know RGB black and that would cause that would cause some serious problems um, because they're reference types right and so now we're just gonna uh, overwrite this array and now RGB black and RGB will point at the same thing and you'll get a whole bunch of weird things and yeah it'll be a bad time for you so very important to know the difference between reference types and value types as as far as how it works when they are assigned so let's uh do this we're going to take rgb ref equals rgb black here right and then in the put pixels down here instead of just using the hard-coded rgb we can use rgb ref right and that way we know uh, that we're not going to get any pass by reference errors. Uh, the other thing we gotta uh, remember is, well, if we're going to do that, we gotta say RGB ref equals RGB here as well, so that um, if we we are not on the border, we still have the proper value for the R for this uh, uh, color. Uh, what else? So now we just need to duplicate this code and do it for the y-axis as well. And uh, let's see how many in are we were, we're indented for. So uh, dash line indentation four for a 64 column limit. Uh, damn, I think I am out of dash line i4 x64. Yeah, no, okay, I might be out of I'm gonna guess I never went that deep. Dash line i three x sixty four. Yeah, one two three four. Yeah, so I guess I never should probably make a, another uh, shortcut that uh, addresses this level of indentation. One two take away one two uh, four. So usually I do not nest my code this deep. Um, but we'll make a little note here that this is a uh, border. It's the, uh, so this area is our like border, is our border code. So between these B's here, that's for border, B is for border, B is for border. Uh, uh, one pixel thick border. Before we forget, we have to take anywhere where it says LDX on this section, and we just gotta convert these to Ys. And then also we have to calculate the LDX and LDY maximums for the uh, the valid range of the local coordinates. Oops. Um, and then, okay, so I just ran out of time, so I'm gonna stop recording this video. I'll keep the stream going. And because uh, I don't want my YouTube videos to, to go uh, for too long.